And I was explaining to him, and, and we were talking about, we were talking about love, black love. And so I said, I said, you have to understand, it's so much fun to have sex like monkeys, but 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 the real worth of your woman, the real worth of your woman comes when she gets in her 50s and she gets in her 60s. Why? Because see, the reason that you can have good sex when, when a woman is young is because of the fact every month that 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 egg is gonna drop. When that egg drop, that's gonna make her wanna have sex. So so she's controlled by sex, the desire to have sex, you see? And so then therefore, in a sense, her mind, her mind is preoccupied with, with being with being creative, even if she don't have a baby. She still wants to have sex because that's how you get a baby. But the thing is, this is that when, when your woman gets in her 40, when gets in her late 40s, her 50s and 60s, what happened is that as her as she stopped having a period, then therefore, in a sense, she becomes more intuitive. Why does she become more intuitive? Because she's not dominated by her sex drive. Do you know? Let me tell you something. If you love your black woman and your black woman wants you to have something, your black woman will get you to have any damn thing you want on the planet Earth. Do you hear me? Because see, if your woman, if your woman wants you to have something, you're gonna get it. That's why, that's why a smart, a smart brother, <laughs> a smart brother never quits a woman. You never quit a woman. You just kind of, uh, you know, kind of disappear. Uh, you, you just don't call her that much. And, and you just kind of let it waste away. So you leave her confused. You want to leave her confused because you don't want to focus on that. F him up! F him up! And if you tell them you quit them, then they're going to want to, they're going to, want to be thinking harsh of you. They're going to want to, in a sense, put curses on you. And curses can, curses can affect you because it's the intention behind the statement, you see. And so then, therefore, the sense is that everything in this society is meant for you not to be able to deal with your woman and to make your woman feel that she shouldn't deal with you, see? Because, see, they, they, they know that, that, that a good black woman is like an amulet. What are you talking about, Dr. Winters? A good black woman is like an, an amulet or a talisman. Is that she's your lucky charm because, see, because of the fact that she's a goddess, because of the fact that she has an, a relationship that with God that's different from our relationship from with God, she can produce wonders for her man. And how does she produce wonders for a man? Because if she speak it, if she wants it for you, you're going to get it. And if she wants you effed up too, you're going to get it. I'm sorry. That's why I look. <laughs> That's why a lot of baby daddies, they don't never get ish. That's why a lot of baby daddies have, have messed up lives. See, because they, they got a woman somewhere thinking negative about them. They got children somewhere thinking negative about them. I'm not saying you stay with a woman because of the fact that you had children with them. You stay with a woman because you, you develop a bond. And you develop a bond by opening up those chakras, letting in that, letting in that, those genes, letting in that knowledge, letting in that experience. See, right now, right now, if you, if you, if you, if you, if you did a thing, just a punch a picture of slavery. Just go to Google and just Google slavery. When you go to the images, you're gonna mainly see see black women being beat. About 95% of the pictures that you see of black people being disciplined is of women. Do you know why? Because they know, they know, the white men know that your secret weapon is black women. That's why, that's why, unless, unless you're an immigrant black woman, most, most FBA black women will not marry white men. Yes. But now they want, they want to try to get mm -hmm. black women to want to marry white men through the commercials and all that type of shit. You're so totally right. I watch a lot of television and you see there's no truly black couples. You don't hardly you don't hardly see a black couple because the fact is that they don't want you to have that power. See, they want to try to get that power, but the average FBA woman, foundational black American woman, she's not going to marry a white man because she knows what the white man did to us, did to mm -hmm. her, did to her grandma. But if but if you come from the Caribbean or you come from Africa, you yep. can pretend in yourself that that you that you stolen whiteness. See, people want to get a, want to get whiteness. That's why they want to steal black thighs. Yeah, you see that a lot in the black nerd female community. How they always want to date the edge lord, 
white boy who doesn't take baths, who's suicidal. But but look how look how many of those, look how many of those women be killed by white guys. See, yeah, a brother every now and then, a brother a couple of days ago, a brother he uh, killed his girlfriend in in Illinois. But I mean, sometimes a brother can't take it when a woman quit him. Sometimes, mm -hmm. but a lot of these white people they'll kill a woman just for fun. So see, man, see. That's, see because of the fact that, that the white man know that, that the black woman has that type of power, you see. Look, look at that guy Murdoch. He he killed his wife and he killed his children for some money. When I was when when we were younger, I would tell my wife, I said, damn, I had a dream about being a millionaire. And I said, I'm not a millionaire. You know what she told me? She said, Clyde, you are a millionaire because you got millions and millions of love from me. Damn! Damn! The power, the power of a black woman. Woo! Yeah, Woo! that's what I. That's what I always try to tell these like little nerdy black boys and just nerds in general who are on some like nihilistic hate God, hate life. Like, dude, you just need a good woman in your life. I know it sounds corny, cliche, but it's really true. But it's a lot of angry black men out there. And yes, they're, and they're yes. angry because the fact is that you. Did you go to all black high school? Yes. Well, it wasn't all black. It, it was more majority black. I would say okay. it was like 80% black. Think about it. You and Benjamin, think think about it. Think about it. It is it is very hard to approach some sisters. They'll put you down. I know when I was in when I was in high school, you know, I I, I like I had a couple of girls that I liked, and then the boys in band, they took the girl away from me. Get the hell out of here. Cause they was cool. And I was considered square. Even though I played on the football team, I was still considered square compared to the, the guys in band. And do you know, it is so hard, it is so hard sometimes to approach a sister. And a lot a lot of brothers, they they be afraid to approach a, to approach a sister because a lot of times they put them down because they say, you're a nerd, uh, you square, all that type of stuff. But you know, let me tell you a story. One, you know, I, when I was in high school, you know, after, after the bad boy took my uh, girl, I asked my brother, I said, uh, I said, uh, Ed, you know, his name was Edward. They called him on 47th Street in Chicago. They called him Mr. Ed. So he was at the pool hall. He was at the pool hall. I said, teach me how to rap. And so then, so he said, number one, if you if you ever need some women to live off, find a, find a nurse, a teacher, or a beautician, because they'll always take care of you. <laughs> then he, but then, but then he told me he said is that he said is that you gotta understand. Look at that ugly guy. He said at your school, don't you notice that the ugliest boys have the prettiest girls? I said, you know, you're right, Ed. I said, why is that? I said because I'm gonna tell you, tell I'm gonna tell my nerd audience. Listen to me. I'm gonna tell you how how it is. Is that that ugly guy has the prettiest girl because he dares to take a chance to go talk to her. Woo! A lot of a lot of times, a lot of times, a lot of times we don't have we don't have a, a good girlfriend or we don't have a girlfriend, period, because we're afraid to be put down. You gotta be put down, you gotta be told no sometime, but there's always a yes. It's just like in sales. It's a yes eventually. I remember I went to my first con and I was hanging around all these white boy nerds and they were acting like the most cliche nerds you can think of, scared talk to the girls more male white nerds hanging around all the all other male white nerds with no women around i'm sitting there looking like this girl is dressed like chun lee if you're not gonna take the chance i will you just gotta step up to them you know they had a song when i was when i was growing up that song saying if you want to be happy for the rest of your life just make an ugly woman your wife wanna be happy for the rest of your life but for my personal point of view, get an ugly girl to marry you. I said, hell no. I want me a beautiful woman. I want me a sexy woman. Yes, sirs. I'm not going to lie. Right. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Huh? No. There's nothing wrong with that. That's right. But see, the whole point is this. You nerd guys, stop it. Stop it. No, no. What they need to stop is don't think your dream girl is a girl with green hair and cat ears. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, you got to be realistic with the girl. You're not going to get an overly big-breasted girl who just likes sex all the time. That's not a real person. Yeah. <laughs> not, and not only that, not only that, but see, you'll get tired of having sex all the time with her. You won't see, 
you have to understand is that a woman a woman wants to be talked to a woman not not yes. not all yes. like, like pretty words and all that but just mm -hmm. talk to just, just make open a just, right yep just being open hell i was tired of those ugly boys having all the pretty girls i wanted one too someone out there to get one heck yeah i, yeah. I feel you on that I got a question. Like, what's so like? Why are there so many black nerds who so anti pro black? Like, every time you try to speak like actual black history, like you talk about, they dismiss as hope tip crap, or they say, "Oh, you too earth folk centric. Why are you being so woke? Why are you being like? Why is that?" Um, that's because that's because the fact is that they 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 have what's called caves, as I said before, culturally acquired identity immune deficiency syndrome. What it is is that. They they want they 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 feel that that they're only legitimized by acting as if they're white. They feel they feel that to be a natural nerd, you have to in a sense subscribe to everything that white people do. You see, and and they, and they feel that they give up their identity as a as a black person, then therefore in a sense, they they feel that they're going to be accepted. See see when you when people are talking about woke culture what they're doing what they're doing is they're saying that you as a black person you don't deserve to be respected they're saying that they're saying that you as a black person you don't deserve to have what they have see the problem with many with many uh, with many afro american foundation of black americans uh, that because they suffer from caves culturally acquired identity immune deficiency syndrome because of the fact that they've lost their immunity to whiteness, once they lose their, their, their immunity to whiteness and they don't know their history, then they decide in a sense that they're going to take on a different identity. And that identity is a white person. But see, as a white person, you cannot, you cannot ever be accepted by them. I don't know, my, my grandson, you know, my little grandson, my older grandson, too, he's 26. You know, he has some white people that he hang out with and they're, they're cool. They, they get along. but. He's been on so many sites where he's been called nigger, you know, where, where they call you nigger all the time. And they just always ready to, 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 to call you that. Some 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 uh, FBA people, they get so used to be called a nigger that they'll go to these sites just to have a friend online who's denigrating them by calling them names and stuff. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Whereas, whereas you have to have a sense of identity. See, Black people don't understand. When they talk about the critical race theory, CRT, CRT. They 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 use CRT to say that that represents Black history. No, a, a professor called Derek Bell. He was a professor, a law professor, and he developed the, he developed what's called critical race theory. And what critical race theory means is this: number one, critical race theory means that white people hate you. Number two, critical race theory says that. No matter what you do, no matter what you try to do, white people are still going to try to create a race in which you're going to lose. See, racism is made up by the word race. Race is competition between two people, right? Mm -hmm. But see, under racism, under racism, the white man creates a, a, a race in which you participate, but you're going to always lose. Wait a minute, Dr. Winters, you said they hate you. You said they create a race that you're going to lose. You say they want to kill you. Then I should give up. No, you don't give up. You don't give up. Because see, even though they hate you, even though they created a race, that they're going to make it so you lose. Even though many of them want to kill you. The fact is, is that if you put your trust in God Almighty, if you put your trust in God, nothing can touch you. Nothing can hold you back. And you can still be successful. You may never be as successful as, as, as the average white person. But you can be successful enough to have a nice car, nice home, nice place to live. I got another question. So oh, yeah. what do what what do you think about people, my people? A lot of black nerds, they'll say, okay, well, I didn't grow up during that time. I don't see no no racism in front of me. I am not being I'm not being, you know, uh shoved by police. I'm not being forced to sit at a certain count line. What do you tell like that's a lot of a lot of rebuttal to a lot of um young black nerds. Okay. They they, they, they think they don't see racism right now. That's easy. All you gotta do is say. You're a liar. And they're going to say, why you call me a liar? You go to Reddick, don't you? Yeah, I go to Reddick. Yeah, I go to Reddick. <laughs> what do they say about your population at Reddick? Nigga, what? Come on now. See, you have, you have to make them, you have to make the average brother, even anybody that suffers from caves, you have to make them admit. Just say, how many, how, many, how many games have you played with people that you didn't know? And the minute you got on there and, they, and, you, and, you heard, and they heard your voice, they called you a nigga. 
That's all you got to do. The point is this, is that they will not allow you. They will not allow you to be a human being. They're going to always, they're going to always call you a nigga wherever they, they're at. You know, mo most, most of the nerds like to go to Reddick. They like, they like to, to go to those sites. A lot of, a lot of times, a lot of brothers who go to Reddick, they don't even want to talk. They don't want them to hear them. They don't want to get it in, in many discords, many discords, the minute you get in there, you know, it, you'll be going, to, you'll be going along good. You'll be, you'll be with a bunch of guys and they can be of different races. And many of them will, will not even, will not even care about your race, but it's always somebody that's going sooner or later, get in that discord. that's going to call you a nigga. Am I right or wrong? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you no, right. you're not wrong. I, I don't play games, but I just listen to people. Yeah. I barely play games myself too. Okay. I got another, I got another question. Go ahead. Okay, you talk about the Moors and like the black history throughout time. Well, what is a good movie or TV that's a good reference, like show that? Because I always tell people Robin Hood is a perfect example. I'll give. Oh, people. Robin Hood is a beautiful movie. That's what I was gonna say. Oh, because sorry. Robin, remember they had a Moor. Uh, the Moor teaching the white man how to use. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's like a perfect example. In every version of Mo of um Robin Hood, they always have um the black man teaching the white man. Use yeah. it every time, even the new one with Jamie Foxx. Don't you see? Don't you see? Because see, the whole point is this is that they know their history, but they have to lie about our history because they don't want you to have a role in history. Just like if you want to really learn about slavery, you got to look at emancipation. The latest movie by uh by Will Smith, Emancipation because okay. he because he emancipation, but he, okay. he he was he was supposed to have been from, from New Orleans because he was supposed to have been from New Orleans. They wanted to try to say he was Asian, but he was the FBA. But when okay. you look at this movie, when you look at this movie, this black man, this black man in a sense, he's with his family. And, and then the white man comes and say, nigga, we taking you off this, this, this uh, plantation. And he tells his wife, I will return. This, this is an actual story about whenever they show that brother with all those webs on his back, he told his wife, I will return. That, that is the only black love story that I've ever seen in, in my life. I'm 72 years old. But that was black love because this, this it goes on to show you all the brutality that black people experience. It showed y'all when you went to a plantation that when you got to the plantation, they had, they had black people heads on, on pipes. Yes. Many Are people don't know the real plantation. They showed that in the movie? They, yeah, they showed that in the movie. Oh, they brutal. On the real, no, they just showed the truth, man. I know, I know, no, no, I'm, I'm, that's yeah. that's that's how I want to see that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, so so they they show they show these black people heads and stuff. See, every plantation had a black person head until it rotted, then they put another black person's head up there. They would sometimes get a black person. They get the strongest black man on the plantation, and they get four horses. They get a horse to tie tie the legs to one horse, then the other leg to another horse. Then they'll tie the arm to one horse, then the other arm, and they would use those horses to pull that strong black person apart. See, emancipation. Do you know why? Do you know why they don't never bring up emancipation? Do you know why Will Smith, that's the only movie they didn't talk about? Because he, he showed slavery like it was. Mm. What, what one of the directed by Antoine Fuqua? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah. And then, and then I don't. I don't want to go over all. I don't want to go in all. Then his brother and since he get, he fights in the Civil War. Do you know how many black people fought in the Civil War? Two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. Do you do you know that that those white people they started deserting. They started leaving. The North was losing in the Civil War till we came in. Two hundred thousand. Many of them were maroons. We kicked those white people ass. And in the movie, they have it. They have it when he had one of his first battles. And these brothers, they fight. They fight. And they win. The only movie they showed you of, of black people was with Denzel Washington. He's led by the white people. And all the Negroes die. Yaza, the Negroes die. Yes, uh. But we won most of those battles. We didn't all die. They had a policy, you know, the black, the uh, the mongoloid and white Indians from Oklahoma. They're the ones who started the policy, not white people. It was uh, it was the uh, white Indians from Oklahoma. They started the policy of never capturing, never, never capturing a black person. If, if you surrender, uh, black people couldn't surrender because if you surrendered, they killed everybody in the platoon, everybody in the battalion. So you knew you had to fight because you knew you couldn't surrender.
Do you know that? Do you know that that the North would have would have lost? That's that's why the, that's why they had the Emancipation Proclamation, so they could get some soldiers to fight in the damn war, and we fought damn good. We kicked ass. You know, Doctor Short, he, he's doing some research now on the uh, on the black people in the Civil War. You know, he uh, just got this two volume book <clears throat> that lists all the two hundred thousand black men and women who served. See, ooh, jeez. You're unique people, man. You're unique. And we got black folks out here worshiping every other, uh, worshiping Jamaicans and Haitians. Ain't nothing wrong with none of that, them, them yeah. people. It's just why y'all worshiping, like, living in Jamaica? We get it. You don't like America, but you can't flee from your country. This is I'll our be, country. Like, stop being afraid of standing up and saying you love this country. Yeah, we got white supremacy, but we fight it every day. And we're the only black, we're the only, we're the only people on earth that fight white supremacy. Yes, the Japanese don't fight it. Heck no. no Can I really chime really in know. for a second and just oh. say I was at the 40th anniversary of Dr. King's assassination in Memphis, and I met a Japanese reporter from the Nikkei uh, network. And I was talking to him about race and Japanese men. You know, he's lost. And I, I, I asked him, I said, you know, why is it that you Japanese hate black people who've never done anything to you, but you love white people that have dropped two nuclear weapons on you? Would you love me if I dropped a nuclear device on you? Is that the key to your heart? And well, we didn't have further problems, but he got mad. Said, "You, you love the people that kill you, yeah. and you mad at me. You, it's weird. See, part of what's happened here. It's sort of like Cinderella. It's a, a white supremacist version of Cinderella. Even though Cinderella was the outcast, she was the the queen. She was the prize. Not her ugly stepsisters or ugly stepmom. That's sort of like the white supremacists and the honorary white people. They're not anybody that anyone wants, and they can't wear our shoes. They're very much aware of it. And we've got to understand that what is ours is ours, and it, it won't go to anybody else. As for the Japanese,